kids help me um, kind of relive what I missed. You know, I mean, I missed 29 years. I grew up in prison. I lived in an orphanage for the first seven years of my life. I was taught to be a perfect codependent. That is someone who morphs themselves into anything that will make other people happy. It's almost like being in a pet store when people bring the pets out and put them in a little box and you can play with them for a little while and decide if you want them or not. That's what being adopted is like being in an orphanage. I spent many years trying to be everything that my family, um, what I thought my family wanted me to be, which um, I, I later learned, sadly, years, years later, that they just wanted me to be me. And um, I didn't know who me was. I spent um, my teen years getting in trouble, um, hanging out with the fun kids, you know, I'm anything it took to fit in. Left home, ended up uh, connecting with a guy that I actually knew that was from the military as well um, and he was uh, he ended up being a sociopath when I realized that I was in a really bad situation and I didn't feel that I had anyone that I could turn to my family included because I had disappointed them so much that I didn't think I could call them and ask them for help um, I ended up running to friends and um, he showed up and killed my friends were arrested. I was charged with first degree murder. I didn't kill anyone. And I did 29 years. I was arrested when I was 20 years old and I got out of prison when I was 49. For me, had I had someone that I felt I could talk to, someone that I felt that I could, um, that would just listen and give me good advice, um, I would not have lived those 29 years in prison. Had I had someone to soundboard off of, it'd be a different life for me. And so I go and I talk to kids today and I tell them, find somebody to talk to. You know, you think mom and dad don't understand. You you, you don't want to tell them the intimate secrets of, of your mishaps. When we're young, we think we're invincible. And it's embarrassing to say, I don't know. You think that everyone around you has it and, and, it, and is doing it and, and they look so perfect on the outside. But what we don't know is that inside, all of us are like, oh my God, am I doing the right thing? You know, was that the right thing to say? What, you know, am I hanging out with the right people? You want to fit in so bad that you can see somebody and know that what they're doing isn't right, but you're afraid to stand up and say, you know what, that's, that's not cool and I don't want to be a part of that. To stand on your own is, is a scary thing, but it also shows that you're a leader. And wanting to fit in is actually being a follower. We're afraid. You know, fear, sadly, makes us do a lot of the wrong things, even though we know it's the wrong thing. We're just afraid to stand out. We're afraid to be different. It's okay to tell someone, you know, I don't want to hang out with you. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you treat me. You know in your heart what's right. Mom and dad are like, why are you hanging out with those people? Those people are no good for you. You know, why are you doing this? And it's like, you know, why are you driving me crazy? I don't know why I'm doing this, but I don't know how to get out. But you don't tell that to your parents. You just get angry. When I got locked up, um, I did fit in. Um, I definitely realized that um, I was, uh, I had screwed up big time. And I was in the spot where it was like, oh my goodness. I don't want anyone to have to live that fate. You know, because I made the wrong decision, because I was afraid to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. The, the old saying, you know, kids are our future. They are. If I can stop one from walking in my footsteps, then I've done my job. You, you have to be not afraid to want something better for yourself.